series so in this video we will talk about energy equation and the nature of orbits under the inverse square law of force so let's start so we got the expression for force in polar coordinates and we get the radial and transverse part and we have also seen that the transverse part this f theta part that is m r theta double dot plus twice r dot theta dot is zero so there is no contribution from the transverse part so only the radial part is contributing so this is f r the radial force which is equal to m r double dot minus r theta dot square and we know our angular momentum is equal to m r square theta dot which is a constant we can substitute for theta dot by using this expression so let's put in here so our force becomes m r double dot minus m r j square over m square r4 because it's a square we know the relation between force and the potential minus db by dr so let's put the expression for fr m r double dot minus j square this mr will cancel out with this so we are left with m r cube and this is minus db by dr so we can write this j square over m r cube as so this will become positive d over dr the derivative form which is j square over 2 m r square and this is minus dv over dr so our equation becomes like this so we can club both the terms we get the effective potential so this is our equation so let's multiply this whole equation on both sides by r dot this is m r double dot r dot is equal to minus d over dr v r j square over 2 m r square dr over dd so r dot can be written as dr by dt so we can write this term as time derivative of half m r dot square and this is minus d over dt because dr dr will cancel so we are left the time derivative here also so let's combine the the three terms so we can write this as time derivative of mr dot square plus vr plus j square over 2mr square is equal to 0 so these three terms combine to give the energy the total energy of the system is this half mr dot square that is the kinetic energy and that is vr that's the potential energy and the both terms with j square over 2 mr square gives the effective potential so we can see that the time derivative of this whole energy is zero that means our energy is constant so this is the energy equation in a central force field so let's move to the next part so in this we will take a force which is k over r square which has a inverse dependence on r square so this is a kepler's force so now we have to find out the potential so we can find out the potential by simply integrating with a negative sign force let's put the expression for force and do the simple integration which comes out to be k over r 
so our effective potential that is v prime becomes k over r plus j square over 2m r square so this is the effective potential we have plotted the effective potential on the y axis with r on the x axis so our first case is when a force is repulsive so when force is repulsive that means our k is greater than 0 our effective potential which is k over r plus j square over 2m r cube is more than 0 that means our effective potential is positive and we know the kinetic energy can't be negative so this is positive this can't be negative that means only positive energies are possible let's understand it with an example consider a particle with total energy E1 just coming from infinity so let's say this is a particle when it is coming closer to the smaller value of R so this will trace this plot so as it encounters this turning point this intersection point of the path and this energy level at this point the particle will rebound let's say this is this turning point to be R1 at R1 our effective potential becomes equal to E1 that means if we use this equation so our total energy of the system is E1 and the effective potential is also E1 that means our kinetic energy becomes 0 at this point kinetic energy becomes 0 at this point as it encounters this turning point it travels out to the infinity again so this is a unbounded motion so as you increase this level if we consider a particle having an energy somewhere here so then the turning point will be this one so this is unbounded motion if the force is repulsive here our k is more than 0 and j is not equal to 0 so let's move to the next case if our k is equal to 0 that means there is no force so our effective potential will become j square over 2m r square so you can see the dashed line which is representing this plot of j square over 2m r square for a particle with total energy e1 the turning point will occur at a smaller value of r but the motion will remain unbounded so it is also unbounded here k is 0 and j is not equal to 0 so let's see the next case so in third case here we are taking k less than 0 so that means we are having the attractive force so the attractive force potential is given by the this solid plot so this is k less than 0 and j is not equal to 0 so you can see for positive energies so if energy we know energy is half m r dot square plus the effective potential if the kinetic energy of the particle is more than the effective potential then an energy is positive 
so for these positive energies the motion will remain unbounded just like the previous two cases let's consider this e1 the particle with a energy e1 so for this curve our turning point is coming here so it's much smaller value than r2 so for positive energies the motion will remain unbounded but the turning point will occur at much smaller values than the previous two cases so the another case if if kinetic energy becomes less than the effective potential in this case our ener total energy of the system becomes negative for negative energy let's say this e3 energy this is a negative energy so you can see the lower bound and the upper bound so this is r4 and r5 so here we are having here the range of r is moving from r4 to r5 this is the range this is the minimum and this is the maximum r value so it's like it is oscillating between the two different radii it is a bounded motion if energy is negative the motion is bounded otherwise it is unbounded so this is a two sub cases for this attractive force potential so fourth case when the particle energy e becomes equal to minimum effective potential energy so let's say we are having a particle with total energy e4 the motion is possible only for one value of r that is r not so if particle motion is possible only for one value of r that is r not except this point at all other values kinetic energy becomes negative which can't be possible so in this case the motion is circular at this point we are having the circular motion so it's a bounded motion so these are the cases so if you have any doubts in any of the cases you can write me in the comment box if you find this video helpful please like share and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching this video